Our last step in the top-down game is to set up some crushing blocks that are going to sit on either side of our fire pit. Now this is really, really easy to set up, but I will warn you that this makes your level extremely difficult, especially because we're going to put a random value in there. So if you play it and you decide it's too hard, you know, you could, well, you could make all kinds of changes to make things a little easier, but we're going to go ahead and set it up for as, as hard as it can be. So here we are. I'm going to take this block that we we're using to block the player's path earlier, and I'm going to hold down Alt and make a duplicate of it. And I'm going to take the duplicate and we'll put it on one side of the, of the fire pit. Now I'm going to set this so that it's nice and precise right up against the wall. So you see how we're just barely kind of overlapping the little tiles there. Now I'm going to hold down Alt and put another copy of that right on the other side of the fire pit. So you can see how those look. Now we're going to take both of those, and together we're going to duplicate them so that they're both on the other side of the fire pit. So we've got a crusher on either side. And I want these to line up exactly, so we'll push these over so that they're just barely overlapping with these tiles as well. All right, now the flashing green is kind of confusing because we've already used that as a way to indicate to the player that they can walk up and interact with uh, with a certain object and we really don't want to suggest to the player that they should walk up and interact with these so I'm gonna open up the content browser scroll down to our top-down package let me make sure it's fully loaded which it should be I'm just making sure I'm careful let's grab material instances and I've got MIC block crushers and if we open this up it's the same as the block material we put onto our initial block. It's just now this one glows red instead of green. So, you know, hopefully suggesting psychologically that these are bad as opposed to the green ones, which are good. So we'll just connect these right up. And there we go. So we've got our four crushing blocks in place. Now we just need to give them some behavior. Now here's how we're th this is going to be kind of interesting. I'm going to take the second block. Now, notice that I'm looking directly across at the alcove. We're going to take the blocks that are on the right, and I'm going to rotate these around 180 degrees. We'll do this over here, too. Rotate it around 180 degrees. Why 180, you say? Because this means we can take both corresponding blocks and move them in a single axis. In this case, technically the x-axis. And as long as we're setting up it, you know, if you see it with local, you can see how the x-axes point toward each other. Now we can use the same matinee to bring these two blocks together and make them slam into each other. As a matter of fact, if I move them both right now in local, it's not going to work if I have them both selected, but it will work if we use matinee. All right, now let's jump into Kismet. And where are we going to put our crushing blocks? Let's put these down here next to our killer pillars. Now the setup for this is relatively straightforward. Let's start with a level loaded event. And as soon as this begins, we're going to fire off a couple of matinees. We'll just start with one. Now to start the matinee process, I'm going to grab just one of our blocks. Now it doesn't matter which one you grab as long as you remember who is partnered with whom. So we're going to start off with this guy down here in the lower left. And this is if we're looking up toward the alcove that finishes the game. And we'll jump into matinee, I'm sorry, jump into Kismet, and then create a new matinee. And at the beginning of the level, we'll hit play. Now, we are not going to be looping this matinee. Uh, this, the matinee is going to cause our blocks to slam together and then pull back apart. So technically, we could loop. But just to make things a little more interesting, i.e. difficult, we're going to drop in a delay. So new action, miscellaneous, delay. So upon completion, we will start a delay, and this delay is going to be powered by a random float variable, which we're going to set to a random value between 0.15 for min and 0.45 for max. Then once that delay is finished, we'll wrap back around and play again. But what sort of motion are we going to play? Well, let's take our animation, and I'm immediately, as soon as we get in here, I'm going to bring it down to... About one and a half seconds, I think, would be good. We'll go ahead and set the time slider back to zero. Now, we still have one of those blocks selected, so let's right-click, create a new empty group, which I will call 
crushing block. And we need to add a movement track to this. Now, I'm still snapped to 0.5 seconds, so let's pull that down. In fact, I'm going to pull that all the way down to 0 0.01. Now, we've got our first key in place. I'm going to slide all the way to the end and press Enter, and that'll put another key in place that'll put the block back at its original position. Now, I'm going to go to about 0.33, though if you're not exactly precise with that, it's okay. Here I am at 0.335. That'll be just fine. Let's go ahead and press Enter to create a new key. And then we're going to slide this so that it's halfway across the little gap in between our blocks. Now, if we put this in the top viewport, I could probably get that pretty close, if not right on. And there's all of those particles in our way. That's probably going to get us right where we want to be. So if we come back over here to the wall, and I was to measure that out, let me go ahead and make my view nice and big so everybody can see it. Uh, between the edge of the block and the wall, I've got right at 152 units. We'll see if that's pretty close. I think it'll be. Now let's close out of matinee. We could play through this a couple of times if you just want to see what it looks like. So we'll stop, hit play, kink. So it just slams in, and then it slides back to its original position. So we'll close this, get back out to Kismet. And there's a setting we need to put on here. We need to put Rewind on Play, make sure that's on, so that every time we call this, it automatically rewinds and does another crush. So right now, all we're moving is one block. So let's grab the block just across from this. Jump back into Kismet. Right-click and create a new object var using this interp actor. And plug the two together. Now let's open up Matinee and see how this works. And they slam together. In fact, they might be overlapping a little bit. Nope, they're just touching. So that was that worked out really well. So now they're slamming into each other, which is exactly what we want. Let's close out of Matinee. Let's go back into Kismet. And we're going to take our Matinee sequence and the delay, and we're going to copy these. So Control-C, Control-V. Pull these down here, and we're also going to fire these up, and these will power the other two blocks. So we can take these two and just delete them. Let's jump back out here into our level. We'll grab these two blocks, jump back in, right-click, create new object vars, and plug them in accordingly. Now this second matinee, just for variation's sake, we're going to take our little keyframe here and slide this back to, let's say, actually we could go all the way, all the way back to one second. And then we'll take our little end flag and pull that back to one second as well. So we do have some pretty severe variation. That's going to make this really tricky to gauge exactly when you should jump. So it's just one of those things where you have to decide how hard you want your game to be. Now the last thing we want to do is set up a system such that if these blocks encroach on our mover, if they touch the mover, they're going to crush them. I mean, they're, they're giant stone blocks. You know, you expect some squishing to take place. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to come over here. Let's just, let's deselect everything. So I'm just going to click out here in space. Now I'm going to right click, go to new event, come down to physics and create a new mover and nuke the matinee that came in with that. Now let's hit control C, control V, control V, and control V. So we have four separate movers, but currently these movers aren't really attached to anyone. So we're going to select the first mover, jump out here into our level, and grab the first one of our blocks. It doesn't matter which one. Go back into Kismet, right-click on that event, and choose Assign Interp Actor, whatever number it happens to be. In my case, it's 16. Now we need to do that for all of our blocks. So let's grab the next one down, grab another block. It doesn't matter which one, as long as it's one we haven't done already. Right-click and assign that. Actually, we could cheat. You want to see how we could cheat so we don't have to actually leave Kismet? We could grab the little variable here for Interp Actor 3, right-click and choose Select Interp Actor 3 in Viewport, then right-click over here and assign that to our mover. Then grab this guy, right-click, Select in Viewport, right-click over here, Assign. Just make sure you didn't repeat anybody. So there's 16, 17, 3, and 18. Nothing like a sequence, right? Okay, so now all we have to do is modify the player's health. So let's right-click. Go to New Action, 
and we're going to go to actor, come down to modify health, and let's set the amount to a thousand, so we're doing a lot of damage, they'll never survive, and we'll set the damage type to space death, so we get some nice jibs, and we're going to take hit actor and plug that in all the way down. So pretty easy. Now, we need to feed this the actor that actually got hit. So here for the target, I'm going to right-click, and we'll create a new object variable, which I'm just going to take actor hit on all of my movers and just plug that right in. So now not only do we have the motion behavior, but we have the damaging behavior set up as well. Now, of course, we should test this immediately. So what I'm going to do is let's try just starting right here. So we'll play the level already from this point. And we'll run out here to our blocks. And I'd say that's working. And you see we're getting some nice randomization in between our blocks. So there we go. We have all of our blocks set up. Now with that, we have finished up all of the parts that make this into a game. Now, I'm not going to go through and play that again. We already played through it once in the original demonstration showing you the level. At this point, though, it's time for you to cut loose and start having some fun with the setup. You have a fully functional game. It's got traps. It's got bots coming to get you. It's got puzzles to figure out. See if you can take this idea and use it as a basis to create your own variant. Recreate the game in your own image. I'm just encouraging you to get in there and experiment. But that is going to wrap things up for this video. Congratulations on completing the top-down game. Thanks a lot.